You're listening to Crater Community Radio. And now, here is a classic scene from the Goodnight Flagstaff series. Harry felt as though he too were hurtling through space. It had not happened. It could not have happened. Out of here. Quickly, said Snape. He seized Malfoy by the scruff of the neck and forced him through the door ahead of the rest. Greyback and the squat brother and sister followed, the latter both panting excitedly. As they vanished through the door, Harry realised he could move again. What was now holding him paralysed against the wall was not magic, but horror and shock. He threw the invisibility cloak aside as the brutal-faced Death Eater, last to leave the tower top, was disappearing through the door. Petrificus Totalus! The Death Eater buckled as though hit in the back with something solid and fell to the ground, rigid as a waxwork. But he had barely hit the floor when Harry was clambering over him and running down the darkened staircase. Terror tore at Harry's heart. He had to get to Dumbledore, and he had to catch Snape. Somehow the two things were linked. He could reverse what happened if he had them both together. Dumbledore could not have died. He leapt the last ten steps of the spiral staircase and stopped where he landed, his wand raised. The dimly lit corridor was full of dust. Half the ceiling seemed to have fallen in and a battle was raging before him. But even as he attempted to make out who was fighting whom, he heard the hated voice shout, It's over. Time to go. And saw Snape disappearing around the corner at the far end of the corridor. He and Malfoy seemed to have forced their way through the fight unscathed. He ducked and ran headfirst into the fight. His feet met something squashy and slippery on the floor, and he stumbled. There were two bodies lying there, laying face down in a pool of blood. But there was no time to investigate. Ron, Professor McGonagall, and Lupin, each of whom was battling a separate Death Eater. Harry scrambled up the front floor and began to sprint along the corridor, ignoring the bangs issuing from behind him, the yells of others to come back and the mute call of the figures on the ground whose fate he did not yet know. Snape had an immense head start. He pelted toward a shortcut. Remembering to leap the vanishing step halfway down the concealed staircase, he burst through a tapestry at the bottom and out into a corridor where a number of bewildered and pyjama-clad Hufflepuffs stood. Knocking two boys aside as he sprinted toward the landing and down the remainder of the marble staircase. The oak front doors had been blasted open. The giant Gryffindor hourglass had been hit by a curse, and the rubies within were still falling with a loud rattle onto the flagstones below. Harry flew across the entrance hall and out into the dark grounds. He could just make out three figures racing across the lawn heading for the gates beyond which they could disapparate. By the looks of them, the huge blonde Death Eater and, some way ahead of him, Snape and Malfoy. The cold night air ripped at Harry's lungs as he tore after them. Another flash, shouts, retaliatory jets of light, and Harry understood. Hagrid had emerged from his cabin and was trying to stop the Death Eaters escaping. And though every breath seemed to shred his lungs and the stitch in his chest was like fire, Harry sped up as an unbidden voice in his head said, Not Hagrid. Not Hagrid too. The blonde Death Eater was aiming curse after curse at the gamekeeper. But Hagrid's immense strength and the toughened skin he had inherited from his giantess mother seemed to be protecting him. Snape and Malfoy, however, were still running. They would soon be beyond the gates, able to disapparate. Harry tore past Hagrid and his opponent, took aim at Snape's back and yelled, STUPEFY! He missed. The jet of red light soared past Snape's head. Snape shouted, Run, Draco! 
and turned. Twenty yards apart, he and Harry looked at each other before raising their wands simultaneously. Crucy! But Snake parried the curse, knocking Harry backward off his feet before he could complete it. Harry rolled over and scrambled back up again as the huge Death Eater behind him yelled, Incendio! Harry heard an explosive bang and a dancing orange light spilled over all of them. Hagrid's house was on fire. Fangs in there, you evil! Hagrid bellowed. Cruz! yelled Harry for a second time, aiming for the figure ahead illuminated in the dancing firelight, but Snape blocked the spell again. Harry could see him sneering. No unforgivable curses from you, Potter! He shouted over the rushing of the flames, Hagrid's yells, and the wild yelping of the trapped fang. You haven't got the nerve or the ability. In cards! Harry roared, but Snape deflected the spell with an almost lazy flick of his arm. Fight back! Harry screamed at him. Fight back, you cowardly coward! Did you call me Potter? Your father would never attack me unless it was four on one. What would you call him, I wonder? Stupid! Blocked again and again and again and again until you learn to keep your mouth shut and your mind closed, Potter, sneered Snape, deflecting the curse once more. Now come, he shouted at the huge Death Eater behind Harry. It is time to be gone before the Ministry turns up. Imped it! But before he could finish this jinx, excruciating pain hit Harry. He keeled over in the grass. Someone was screaming. He would surely die of this agony. Snape was going to torture him to death or madness. No! roared Snape's voice, and the pain stopped as suddenly as it had started. Harry lay curled on the dark grass, clutching his wand and panting. Somewhere overhead, Snape was shouting. Have you forgotten our orders? Potter belongs to the Dark Lord. We are to leave him. Go! Go! And Harry felt the ground shudder under his face as the brother and sister and the enormous Death Eater obeyed, running toward the gates. Harry uttered an inarticulate yell of rage. In that instant, he cared not whether he lived or died. Pushing himself to his feet again, he staggered blindly towards Snape, the man he now hated as much as he hated Voldemort himself. Septum! Snape flipped his wand and the curse was repelled yet again. But Harry was mere feet away now, and he could see Snape's face clearly at last. He was no longer sneering or jeering. The blazing flames showed a face full of rage. Mustering all his powers of concentration, Harry thought, Levy, No, Potter! screamed Snape. There was a loud bang, and Harry was soaring backward, hitting the ground hard again, and this time his wand flew out of his hand. He could hear Hagrid yelling and Fang howling as Snape closed in and looked down on him where he lay, wandless and defenseless, as Dumbledore had been. Snape's pale face, illuminated by the flaming cabin, was suffused with hatred, just as it had been before he cursed Dumbledore. You dare use my own spells against me, Potter? It was I who invented them. I, the half-blood prince, 